Uh, welcome everyone. Um, before we begin, would someone open us in prayer, please? Let's pray. Gracious Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling each one of us to gather here. As we continue our study on New Testament survey, we pray for your spirit to minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Um, so today we are beginning in the book of Acts. Um, so ideally, uh, we should have gone from Luke into Acts because uh, there is continuation in the things that Luke is talking about. But uh, we'll read a little bit of the end of Luke uh, so that we are able to make the connection back from Luke into Acts. Okay, um, so let's just look at uh, Luke 24 first. Uh, that's the last chapter in Luke. It ends with uh, these three stories. Uh, the first is the women who go to the tomb. So there's a list of a few women who go and uh, find that Jesus is not there. Uh, and they are sent with the message to uh, tell the disciples that uh, Jesus has been raised from the dead. Um, after that, we have the story of the disciples, the two disciples on their way to Emmaus, and um, Jesus walks with them. And once they recognize who Jesus is, uh, they go back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples um, that Jesus has been raised and that Jesus appeared to them. So we have the women who have already told the disciples, and then we have these two disciples as well uh, who return to Jerusalem. And so verses 45 onwards in Luke 24 uh, continues from there, where they are discussing about Jesus, um, Jesus being raised from the dead. So, uh, sorry, yeah. Let's just begin from verse 45 onwards to 53. Give us some context for where Acts begins. If someone can read that for us. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and the repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Thank you. So, um, we see here Jesus appears to the disciples, okay? So, the as they're gathered, they're discussing, uh, all of these people have shared that they've seen Jesus. The disciples themselves have not yet seen Jesus. Uh, they are still, when Jesus appears before them, they still uh, are afraid that he's a ghost. And so he shows them his hands and his feet. Uh, he eats with them just to prove to them that he's really there uh, physically. He's not just a ghost. And, uh, and then we read these last few verses uh, where Jesus tells them, uh, he opens up the Old Testament scriptures to them about how it had talked about the Messiah who would suffer, uh, how it had pointed to him and all that he fulfilled. And then he uh, promises the Holy Spirit, and then we see the ascension. Uh, so from there, let's go to Acts 1, 1 to 11. And if someone can read that for us, please. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the, he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible 
proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Thank you. So uh, we see here Luke uh, clearly continuing, right? From the Gospel of Luke, he is continuing into this book. And he says, in my last book, uh, I wrote about all the things that Jesus did and taught. And uh, right up to the day, he was taken up into heaven. And then he goes into a recap of what Jesus did just before he was taken to heaven. Uh, he appeared to the disciples, proved to them that he had really been raised over 40 days. He taught about the kingdom of God. Um, and then he told them that they would receive the Holy Spirit. Um, and he said, you will receive. So this is the key verse in Acts, Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Uh, we'll see how this verse is an introduction to everything that Luke will talk about in the book of Acts. So how he's arranged the book as well uh, is how the church starts to spread right from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Um, and so uh, Luke begins that recap and then ends with the ascension and then goes into the story of what happens next, the choosing of the 12th disciple, uh, the day of Pentecost, and, uh, and then how the church grows from there. So uh, this is how we can uh, split the book of Acts. Uh, into three sections. So the first section is chapters 1 to 7. Uh, this is where, if we're looking at that key verse, Acts 1-8, um, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. So at chapters 1 to 7 is focused on the church in Jerusalem, starting with the Pentecost uh, and then how the church begins. Let's just read Acts 2, 42 to 47. So that is where after the Pentecost, the church has started, um, and it's just a record of the early church. Acts 2, 42 to 47. Acts 2, 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had needed. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Thank you. So here we see uh, this record of the uh, the first church, right? The church in Jerusalem. Uh, so this is what they were doing. They were meeting together in the temple courts. They were learning uh, about who Jesus is, about this new uh, covenant relationship with Christ. They were fellowshipping together at uh, people's homes, and they were celebrating uh, the communion, right? 
so they were celebrating the Eucharist together. Uh, so this is chapters one to seven, and at the end of chapter seven is where Stephen is stoned. Okay, so we have uh, the record of the first martyr Stephen, and then we go into chapter eight, Acts chapter eight. If someone can read Acts chapter eight, verse one. Acts chapter eight, verse one. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostle. OK, so we see here the start of the spread of the church from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria. Going back to Acts 1.8, uh, the witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria. So this is the second section of Acts, where uh, the persecuted uh, believers move from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, and they're taking the message of the gospel to these parts of, uh, of the ancient Near East. And then uh, verse, uh, chapters 13 to 28 is a record of Paul's missionary journeys. And as we know, Paul travels from Jerusalem all over um, Asia Minor, right? And that is pretty much the known world at that time. So we see from Judea, Samaria, the spread to the ends of the earth through these missionary journeys that are recorded uh, in chapters 13 to 28. So uh, this is why I said Acts 1.8 is the key verse for us to know. Uh, because based on this, Luke will share how the church grew throughout uh, from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Uh, so why do we call it Acts or the Acts of the Apostles? Is uh, because that's how some Greek manuscripts refer to it. So Luke himself doesn't call it that. Uh, but Greek manuscripts use the word praxis, which, is, uh, which means Acts on some manuscripts it's extended to acts of the apostles uh, we see in this book also a focus on peter in chapters 1 to 12 and then on paul from 13 to 28 so we like, talked about paul's missionary journeys from chapters 13 to 28 so chapters 1 to 12 will focus more on peter's leadership uh, in the church and uh, among the apostles, and then Paul's missionary journeys from 13 to 28. Um, now, we all know that Luke uh, is the author, but as scholars like to debate, there is also there are questions about, is it really Luke? Uh, but these are the reasons why we believe it's written by Luke. Uh, the first is, the early church records that it was written by Luke. Uh, the second is like we read in the beginning of Acts. He says, in my previous book, Theophilus. Right? We see the same thing in the beginning of Luke, where he's addressing the book to the same person, Theophilus. So because of that, uh, we see that similar introduction to the book. Uh, we believe that it was written by Luke. Uh, another reason is that there is a lot of similarity in the style of writing, in the language that is used. So uh, uh, Luke uses some of the contemporary Greek like that was spoken between people. But he also uses Jewish Greek, which is closer to the Septuagint. So what is the Septuagint? the Greek translation of the Old Testament. OK, so the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, uh, but uh, it was translated uh, into Greek because most Jews were not speaking Hebrew. Uh, Greek had become the popular language of the people, so the Old Testament was translated into Greek. So in the New Testament, whenever we see quotations of the Old Testament, it's usually using that Greek translation, that Septuagint uh, version of the Old Testament that they are referring to. So uh, Luke uses a lot of that language as well. So we see uh, in terms of language similarity, 
between Luke and Acts. Uh, another thing we see is that Luke himself was on these journeys with Paul. So we see in Paul's epistles, in Colossians, in Timothy, in Philemon, uh, Paul referring to Timothy being uh, to Luke being with him. So uh, by Paul's testimony, we know that Luke traveled with him on some of the missionary journeys. But in the book of Acts itself, Luke records certain journeys that he made with Paul. Uh, in parts of the stories, he starts to talk about we, he says, instead of they or them. Uh, he starts to say we, meaning that he's also part of what was happening there. And so because of that, uh, we attribute this book to Luke. Uh, so I wanted us to just do a look into all of these passages because it's quite fascinating to see uh, Luke's description of the journeys that Paul made. Uh, he goes into a lot of detail and it's quite uh, interesting to see how much detail he puts in into these journeys. So these are longer passages. Uh, we'll just read Acts 16, 10 to 18 first. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately he, he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to some of the race, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of the part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were say, staying in, this, in that city for some days, and on the Sabbath day we went out of the city to the riverside, where prayer was customarily made, and we sat down and spoke to the woman who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. Can go on till verse 18. Yeah. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Okay, so this is the first time Luke talks about being part of what is happening. Okay, so uh, this is Paul's second missionary journey. So we don't know at what point Luke joined him. Uh, but we see here um, in verse 10, uh, Paul has the vision of somebody calling him to Macedonia. And so they are in Troas here. And from Troas, uh, they, they go into the sea. They go to Samothrace, which is here. And then uh, they go to Neapolis. And then they travel to Philippi. OK, so you also have it here on the map. I hope it's clear. Yeah. So um, this is the second missionary journey. And um, Luke is with them briefly. And then after this, after uh, this story where uh, Paul asks, uh, he commands the demon to come out of the girl, Paul and Silas are taken to prison. And so Luke is no longer part of the story at that point. Um, we then see in Acts 20, again, that Luke talks about being with Paul. Uh, so they, this is on Paul's third missionary journey. Um, we'll just look at that. It's a long passage, but has a lot of good information about what uh, what all happened in the journeys. So let's just read that. And we can also just keep track of where they are on the map as we're reading. Acts 20, Acts, verse 5. Yeah. Acts 20, verse 5. Uh, 
These men going ahead waited for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days joined them at Troas, where we stayed seven days. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered, gathered together. And in a window sat a certain man, young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But when Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. When they had come up and broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they thought the young man is, and they brought the young man in alive, and they were not, and they were not a little comforted. Then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Assos, there intending to take Paul on board, for he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when we met. When he met us at Assos, we took him on board and came to uh, Mytilene. We sailed from there, and the next day came opposite Chios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Troglium. Uh, the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus, so he would not have to spend time in Asia for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent us to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I have always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, now how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, you can continue till 21.18. Sorry. So, testifying to, uh, so, and see, now I go, go bound in the spirit to Jerus Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that, that chains and tribulations await me. Um, yeah. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourself, and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. I have shown you in every way, by laboring like this, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said, 
it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. Uh, chapter 21. Now it came to pass that when he had, we had departed from them and set sail, running a straight course, we came to Kos, the following day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And finding a ship sailing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria, and landed at Tyre. For, for there the ship was to unload her cargo. And finding disciples, we st stayed there seven days. They told Paul, through the Spirit, not to go up to Jerusalem. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way. And they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we knelt down on the shore and prayed. When we had taken our leave of one another, we boarded the ship and they returned home. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Tol Tolmes, greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we, who were Paul's companions, departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And when we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. Also some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and brought with them a certain Nason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. And when we had come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went with us to James, and all the elders were present. Thank you. So we see here this uh, third missionary journey, a very detailed account of um, someone who is with Paul on that journey. Uh, so it's just a beautiful story. You see, as they're traveling, there are certain stories that Luke highlights, right? He, he uh, stops at Troas. He talks about the of Eutychus being raised from the dead, uh, stops at Miletus and talks about Paul saying goodbye to the Ephesian elders in the church. Uh, they stop at Tyre and uh, they talk about the prophecy of uh, Paul being uh, being taken to prison. And now we know when he goes into Jerusalem that that's what happens. Uh, so Luke's account is uh, very, very detailed, right? Very detailed. He's from the fact, uh, from the list of all the places they pass to their passing Cyprus from the south. They spend seven days entire. All of this gives us this um, kind of takes us on that journey with Paul, uh, on that missionary journey with Paul. Um, so from here, uh, we read the last account of Luke with Paul on uh, his uh, journey to Rome. Uh, this is also a longer read, uh, but we'll just uh, read that, Acts 27.1. Acts 27.1, one, and when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan court named Julius. 
Uh, you can go ahead, sister, till 2816. Fine. And uh, embarking in a ship of Adramitium, which was about to sail to the ports along the coast, coast of Asia, we put to sea, accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian from uh, Thessalonica. The next day, we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for. And putting out to sea from there, we sailed under the lee of uh, Cyprus because the winds were against us. And when we had sailed across the open sea along the coast of uh, Cilicia and uh, Pamphylia, we came to Mira in uh, uh, Lycia. There the centurion found the ship of Alexandria sailing for Italy and put us on board. We sailed slowly for a number of days and arrived with difficulty of Sindus. And as the wind did not allow us to go further, we sailed under the lee of Crete of Salmon, coasting along it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Heavens, near which was the city of La Sea. Since much time had passed, and the oak was now dangerous because even the uh, fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I Preserve that the perceive that the Oveg will be with the injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than, than to what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, uh, the majority decided to put out to sea from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the in winter there. Now, when the south wind blew gently, uh, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete close to the shore. But soon a, a tempestuous wind called the uh, Northeaster struck down from the land. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we, we gave way to it and were driven along, running under the lee of a small island called Kauda. Kauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergrid the ship. Then, fearing that they would run aground on the trees, they lowered the gear, and thus they were driven along. Since we were violently storm tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the sheep's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small tempest lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night uh, there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I began and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be Afraid, Paul, you must stand before Caesar, and behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. 
so take heart men for i have faith in god that it will be exactly as i have been told but we must run aground on some island when the 14th and 9th had come as we were being driven across the adriatic sea about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land so they took a sounding and found 20 fathoms a little further on they took a sounding again and found 15 fathoms Uh, so say you can go ahead to twenty eight sixteen. Twenty. I mean, continue till twenty eight sixteen. Okay, fine. And uh, fearing that we might uh, run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for days to come. And as the sailors were seeking to escape. from the ship had lowered the sheep's boat into the sea under pretense of laying out anchors from the bow paul said to the centurion and the soldiers unless these men stay in the ship you cannot be saved then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the sheep's boat and let it go as day was about to dawn paul urged them all to take some food saying today is the 14th day that you have continued in suspense and without food having taken nothing therefore i urge you to take some food it will give you strength for not a hair is to perish from the head of any of you and when he when he had said these things he took bread and giving thanks to god in the presence of all he broke it and began to eat uh, then they all were encouraged and ate some food themselves we were in all 276 persons in the ship and uh, when they had eaten enough they lightened the ship throwing out the wheat into the sea now when it was day they did not recognize the land but they noticed a bay with a beach on um, which they planned if possible to run the ship ashore so they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea at the same time loosening the ropes that tied the uh, rods uh, when hoisting the foresail to the wind they made for the beach but uh, uh, striking a reef they ran the vessel aground uh, the bow stuck and remained immovable and the stern was being broken up by the surf the soldiers plan was to kill the prisoners lest any should swim away and escape but the centurion wishing to uh, save paul kept them from carrying out their plan he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and uh, make for the land and the rest on planks or on pieces of the ship and so it was that all were brought safely to land chapter 28 one after we were brought safely through we then learned that the island was called melta the native people showed us unusual kindness for they um kindled a fire kindled a fire and welcomed us all because it had began to rain and was cold then paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire uh, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand when the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand they said to one another no doubt this man is a murderer though he was escaped from the sea justice has not allowed him to live he however shook off the creature into the fire and uh, suffered no harm they were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead but when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him they changed their minds and said that he was a god now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named uh, popius popius 
who received us and entertained us um, uh, hospitably uh, for three days. It happened that the father of uh, Publius lay sick with fever and um, dysentery. And Paul visited him and prayed and putting his hand on him, healed him. And when this had uh, taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had uh, uh, diseases also came and were cured. They also honored us greatly. And uh, when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. After three months, we set sail in a ship that had wintered in the island, a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a um, fig figurehead. Putting in at uh, Syracuse, we stayed there for three days, and from there we made a circuit and arrived at uh, Edgeum. And after one day, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Putoil, Putoili. There were found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, uh, came as far as the uh, Forum of Apios and three uh, Tavens uh, to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier that guarded him. After three days, he called together the local leaders of the Jews, and when they had gathered, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the custom of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. Thank you, sister. So um, we see here um, why I wanted to read these passages is to kind of see what was Luke's experience. So when he's writing this book, he's not writing as an outsider to what was happening, right? He experienced all of the things that he talked about and he wrote it uh, from that experience of seeing the miracles seeing the uh, persecution, uh, seeing uh, the side of appearing before uh, Roman authorities and defending uh, the faith, right? So all of these things, he had a first-hand uh, experience of it, and he was writing from that first-hand experience. Uh, so we'll just quickly cover uh, these last few uh, slides and... Uh, stop there. So when was this written? Uh, we talked about this when we were looking at the book of Luke as well. Uh, majority of scholars believe that it was 70 to 90 AD. Um, a few people, some scholars say in the 60s and fewer say after 90 AD. So why we don't say uh, it was before 64 AD is because Luke is believed to have used Mark as a source when he was writing the Gospel of Luke. Uh, so it has to be after 64 AD. Um, he also talks about the temples. It seems that he's talking after the temple's destruction, and the temple's destruction happened in 70 AD. Um, so that is one reason. But uh, the people who say that it was before AD 64 uh, conclude this because the Book of Acts ends before Paul dies, right? So uh, we see Paul in Rome, but we don't know what happens after that. Uh, so some people say because it doesn't record Paul's death, he must have uh, written before Paul's death. Um, but uh, another side of people say that he was mostly focusing on how the gospel was spreading. And once it reached Rome, it had gone from Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. And so he ends on that positive note. Uh, he was not writing specifically about Paul in this book. Right? He was writing about the spread of the gospel. Um, so those are some reasons that uh, people give for the dating. 
uh, the purpose of writing um, in our textbooks we have in our textbook we have uh, he's recording the early church history right and he wanted to show that the church's existence was a historical uh, uh, reality and that the gospel message also is based on historical fact uh, and then he also shows that the gospel applies to all nations and classes so as it spreads it's going to all people from all places there's no uh, distinction between who is welcome who is unwelcome to the kingdom of god um, some other purposes uh, is a legal perspective right so we saw uh, where paul is defending his case in so many places uh, there are people who are brought before authority so stephen paul uh, they are made to defend the faith that they are standing for so luke uh, writes this to give christians a basis to say that even though people were coming against us they were never found guilty right the christians were never found guilty of doing anything against the roman government uh, and so this could be used by later lawyers uh, and even christians trying to defend their faith to say that we are not doing anything uh, that is illegal or against the government. Uh, he uses it also apologetically to show um, the historicity of the Christian faith, right? So there was more value given to a faith that is more ancient. Now, if the faith had begun with Jesus, that means it's only about 30 years old. This religion is only about 30 years old when Luke is writing. But Luke is trying to make the connection to the Jewish faith, to the Old Testament, to show that this is a faith that is as old as Judaism. And it is still one that is to be uh, received by others, because the Jews themselves were not receiving this faith as something that is valid. Um, OK, so we've come to the end of time. Let me just see. There's, okay, so just uh, we'll close with this um, and we'll continue from here on Monday. Emphasis on prayer, signs and wonders and the spirit and world evangelization. We'll read these passages on Monday. So uh, we'll continue in the book of Acts from Monday. I'll post your exam uh, tomorrow, okay? And then um, we'll have till the next weekend. So I'm not sure what the date is for the next weekend, but we'll have more than a week to submit our exam. OK, uh, I'll remind I'll let you all know on Monday once uh, it's posted, but you can look out for it on Google Classroom tomorrow. Thank you. all.